All right, one thing is very important to brush up on are all of your radiation devices, including diodes. So we use these often in the clinic. It's important to know why they're used, how they work, every aspect and characteristic of them, honestly. So you very well may get a question. You see a picture like this and they say, okay, what are these? Why is it shaped like this? What is turning I-50 to R-50 doing physically? And then what is the KQ for 6X, 18X, 9E? And then described how a EPID works. So the device shown here, and we'll cover diodes in a separate video as well, a little bit more on how fundamentally do they work. But you have to know that these are diodes and to understand why they're shaped that way. So this is a photon diode. So those are photons, these are electrons. And why is that? Well, first, most electrons are flat because they are on FOSS. So if you're doing something, I don't know, a chest wall, a forehead, some type of superficial lesion, you can put this somewhere that's flat against the skin and your beam is going to come on FOSS. Whereas when you are using photons, you're more likely going to use IMRT or rapid arc. And so you need better angular dependence for this, or I should say angular independence. And so you have a diode that looks like this. So that is why those diodes do some research and understand how they work. Now, what is turning I-50 to R-50 doing physically? So it is accounting for the stopping power, which is a function of the energy and the depth. So ultimately here, what we want to do is we are going to scan for the percent uh, depth ionization. So that's honestly, when we are scanning our water tank, the first thing we see is ionization. We are then going to shift that curve and that's going to be 0.5 RCAV. And then we are going to account for stopping power. I'm just gonna put S for our stopping power. And that is going to be via your R50 equals 1.029 I50 minus 0 0.06. Now, do I think it's super imperative you remember this equation? Probably not, but when I studied, I remembered it. You never know what you're gonna need to know. And if you were able to spit this out, that's gonna give you those bonus points that are gonna help you get the highest possible grade on a question compared to just passing. So now what is the KQ of 6X? That is 0.99. I know this is just straight memorization, but you do, one of your most important tasks is TG51. You need to know absolutely every single aspect because they aren't going to just ask, oh, what is TG51? They're going to ask, what is KQ? Where does it come from? What does the graph look like? What is it dependent on? And what are the numbers for these? They're going to be extremely specific with their questions. And the last thing you want is for something, a topic that large, and you not know the answer to it. So 0.96 is 18X. And then for 9E, we're going to look at somewhere around 0.9. Obviously, this is going to depend on your beam. But the KQ is lower, or I, should, I should say KQ for electrons is lower than photons. So now, EPIDs, do your own research. This can be a whole question in itself. But first thing, uh, you have a copper plate for buildup. And then you have a gallium phosphor screen. I'm just going to put that there. And a flat panel light sensor that is connected to readout electronics. The light sensor is made of photodiodes, which detect the light. And then a thin film transistor. I should have pulled it up. I apologize. There is a really good diagram that shows a bunch of different 
layers and then they also mentioned what those layers are um maybe it's in con if you look it up on google images you'll be able to easily see it and that's much better than what i'm going to be able to draw so the radiation makes the light in that phosphor which it discharges the photodiode the charge on the photodiode is proportional to the light receiving it and the light sensor is made of amorphous silicon on a glass substrate so uh, amorphous silicon takes ultimately there, there are a couple types what we mainly now is this you know amorphous silicon and it takes the x-ray i probably didn't need to write takes but it takes the x-ray photons to light photons to charge and then that is integrated and can give you uh, ultimately whether it's your fluence or your MV images, wherever it may work, be. So that's kind of a very brief overview of how EPID works. It's kind of hard to find information about it, but, but dig deep, you'll be able to find it. Don't spend too much time on it, just in general, know how it works and then move on for your studying points. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment below and I'll keep making videos. Best of luck studying. You can do it.